All right, so hello everyone. Welcome to our second installment in our speaker series of our BDPA and NSB Entrepreneurship from Idea to Lunch initiative. Uh, this is a partnership between National Society of Black Engineers and Black Data Processing Associates uh, with the goal of providing aspiring and new entrepreneurs uh, with some tools, resources, and skills to take their business ideas and launch them into uh, successful and thriving businesses. So I'm excited to have you all with us today. I'm Devin Jenkins. I'm our National Tech and Career Talk Leader for BDPA. And then I also have Chris Small and Russell Marzett uh, from Nesby. We're part of the programs team there. Uh, and the three of us have been collaborating uh, to make this initiative a reality. So we're excited to have you today. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn the floor over to Vincent, who is our speaker today, the founder and CEO of VL Flows. Uh, I'll let him give his own story of how he got into that um, and share the key takeaways he has for you all today. Uh, we'll come back at the end uh, to leave the floor open for questions and open discussion um, and highlight a few things that are coming up as well. Um, but that being said, Vincent, I will turn it over to you. Devin, thanks for having me. Uh, Russell and Chris, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's interesting, right? So when we were when we were talking about this uh, opportunity, I, I was actually speaking at a, a BDPA uh, event, and uh, it came up. So I am a Nesby representation here. I was uh, Region Four. Uh, I got my Ohio State background on, which uh, you know, try to represent from where I came. So we were looking at. Um, this particular conversation on passing barriers from ideas to market. And I, I, I struggled, uh, honestly. So me and Devin talked a couple of times. I talked to a couple of my, I talked to my mentor and I was struggling like, okay, as a part-time entrepreneur, I felt like it, it'd be an interesting story. Um, but I definitely wanted to, to share some, some nuggets and hopefully you guys could take away and then ask any questions you have. So I have a couple of slides that I'm um, gonna take you guys through uh, to kind of tell you about me and about VO flows and really about the, the, the concept on paths and barriers from ideas to market. And then we'll open up the Q and A at the end. Everybody can see my screen? Yep. Yes. Sounds good. All right. So uh, as mentioned, what I'm gonna kind of go through today is intro a little bit about myself um, and then the topics and then open up for Q and A, right? So, uh, Vincent Flowers. So I'm a business technology leader for Johnson & Johnson. I've been with the organization for 20 years. Um, I graduated from The Ohio State University with industrial and systems engineering back in 2002. And uh, moving from, I was born and raised in Toledo, Ohio, and I moved to New Jersey. And as, as I was telling Chris uh, earlier uh, in the call, had this, this passion project, um, VL Flows, right? So VL Flows was, was originally was initially founded in 2007, but uh, I've been doing web design um, since uh, undergrad. So I think I started doing web design for some of our sororities and fraternities at Ohio State back in 98. Um, oh, I'm digging it, Russell, I'm digging it. I like, the, I like, the, uh, I like that, that field there. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and once again, when I started working at Johnson & Johnson um, after graduating, I, in my head, I said, you know what, I only want to do the corporate thing for, I, I gave myself a goal of seven years, right? And so I was like, I'm going to try to go learn as much as I can so that I can do my own thing. And in that particular, in that time, in that window, I, um, I, I launched VO Flows and started doing web design and that's grown since then. So we, we, uh, we do uh, web design for uh, small businesses and organizations, um, a lot of, uh, 5013Cs, churches, and so on and so forth, uh, where we try to provide a, a quality product at a good price. And then VL Flows has kind of turned into a, a broader spectrum of real estate, small business investments, um, as well as uh, consulting for different organizations. So I have a, a five-year-old uh, daughter and a three-year-old son. And uh, it's interesting, my wife is uh, a graduate of Howard, um, and was having a conversation earlier about the, the real HU, but we won't get into that because I don't know nothing about that. So uh, entrepreneurship, right? Uh, and so 
where I started when I was trying to put together some of these slides, I was thinking, okay, what does it really mean? What did it mean to me? Um, and so from that, from that entrepreneurship is really that mindset around your opportunity obsessed and, and really trying to come up with different ways or different approaches to have a, a leadership balanced life, right? So and that the new definition of entrepreneurship is really talking about innovation, seeing problems as opportunities and figuring out ways that you can really change the world um, and either small steps or even in some cases, large steps. I mean, there's a lot of entrepreneurs doing huge things. Uh, and then we have several entrepreneurs who have that passion and who's bringing just different things to the table, right? So I, I wanted to start with the definition and really kind of talk about the path from ideas to market. So when I was thinking about this, and I think a lot of people, when they think about success, what they think and what they see, normally what we see is just that in products, right? You, you see somebody started something, somebody ended it. A lot of times we don't really see what it really takes and what it really looks like, right? So that the, the, the graph on the right is really what success looks like. Um, and there's a lot of bumps and, road, uh, bumps and bruises, a lot of roadblocks that you guys to try to overcome. Um, and, uh, and times when it comes to the barrier side of the house, a lot of those are internal and we'll talk about that uh, coming up. But I really want to talk about some of the, the high level ideas on like from ideas to market. And I think it was uh, I think it was Gandhi that said um, there's no such thing as, as failure. Right. So you either succeed or you learn. Right. And I think that has been key for me because there's been a lot of times where when I started BL flows, I'm like, I don't know if, if, if I have if I have what it takes, right? I don't know if I have that capacity. I don't know if, if I had that motivation, et cetera, to make it work. But then understanding that every, every time you fall down, you get up and you learn something, right? And then really making sure that your circle of trust, like your, your network is extremely supportive, right? So you gotta be in a, a circle or, or a group of individuals that's really gonna help kind of push you, thrive you, allow you to be able to, to bounce those ideas off of them and give you that true transparent feedback. What I found is when you're surrounded by those, those people or, or those folks that are more of a, a, a yes man type scenario, like take, take for example, um, we'll, we'll take some of the, the stars, right? So rappers, uh, NFL players, NBA players, et cetera. A lot of times I, I, what I found, right? In, in, in my network and in, in the circles that I'm around, a lot of times they don't have those people around them where they're really able to tell them the real deal, right? So, cause they're in it for the wrong reasons. Um, so making sure that your circle is gonna be key is gonna help you be able to get that idea that you have um, to market uh, the best way possible, right? The, the third item I wanna talk about is you can't really be in it for the money. Um, because what, what tends to happen is when you're chasing the money, then you tend to, to get bogged down in understanding kind of why you're really in it, what, what you're really doing and what you're really trying to achieve, right? So now the money coming is, is amazing, but you gotta make sure whatever you're doing, you're doing it for the, the, the love, you have a passion for it. Because once again, that helps to drive you, helps to motivate you because it's only gonna be you who's gonna kind of keep that moving forward, right? Uh, the fifth point I wanna talk about is taking risks. Um, calculate it if you can make them happen. Um, that's going to be, that's very difficult, all right? But understanding that those calculated risks and those decisions that you're making with, it, with your, your ideas to try to get them to market is also going to be help, um, help you to pr pr proceed uh, appropriately, um, achieve what you're looking to achieve, and be, be willing to kind of step outside of your, your box and make sure that you can do some of those things, right? Uh, six is always be your best. Right. I know. And I, once again, I know these are all not like, as I mentioned before, it's not brain. It's not brain uh, surgery here, but ultimately make sure you're bringing your best foot forward so that that idea that you have. And when you're presenting it, when you put together your business plan, um, when you're having those conversations, you're making sure that you're 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 showing that that passion, that energy, that love for what it is you're trying to achieve or trying to, to deliver. And then hopefully you get that opportunity to make that happen. And then the last thing in the past from ideas to market is balance, which I think to me, that's one of the hardest things. As I mentioned before, I have two littles. And so where, where I was struggling with VL Flows, I worked the, the 40 hours for corporate America and I worked the five to nine for VL Flows. 
trying to find new investment opportunities, um, word of mouth uh, conversations on uh, web design, et cetera. Like having that balance to be able to put the time in at home, put the time in on our corporate gig and then make sure VL flows continue to prosper. What I struggled a lot was figuring out how do I do everything, right? And so what I ended up doing when I had my daughter, I made a decision on for me to keep VL flows successful and to keep growing, I had to look outside of um, the, the standard approach. So before um, 2016, I was basically doing everything for, for my business. So what I started doing is looking at different opportunities, uh, different websites. So for example, there's a site out now called Upwork. So a lot of my development that we do for the websites, um, that's done by a developer that I can source on Upwork, right? So what I, what I try my best to do is, is figure out, I, I get my contract with my clients, build, build out the, the time it's gonna take to, uh, to create the, the project, and then work with a, a developer to build it. And then it allows me to be able to put the time in I need to at home, but then continue for VL flows to be successful. Um, and then also deliver on these projects on time and on budget. Next thing I wanna talk about is some of the barriers, right? And so, as I mentioned before, a lot of the barriers from ideas to market, um, the number one barrier, and I put it on here twice, you'll see is fear, right? A lot of folks, we, we overthink, overanalyze, and that, that internal fear of what happens if I'm not successful takes place. It, it, it kind of, it takes over. And then a lot of times we don't proceed, right? So first and foremost, trying to get um, out of our own way and, and step past the fear will help folks uh, get past that first barrier. The second barrier is financial management. So being able to understand how much, um, if you're doing, depending on how you're doing, right? So how I decided to do it, I had that corporate check coming in. And so I was setting aside a percentage of my, my corporate check to make sure that I can keep VL flows afloat, right? As I was building a business, trying to create the opportunities, find different ways to, to invest funds, et cetera. I had to then make that decision. If you don't have that opportunity to actually have that full-time corporate gig, as well as you're, you're building your own, your, uh, your own business, then figuring out how do you take your actual capital and or raise capital so that you can actually be, um, to manage that company and manage, manage successfully. And that tends to be one of the barriers. I mean, that's financial, financials is a barrier in a lot of things in life. I mean, if you, if you look at it, statistically speaking, uh, marriages, happen to break down because of finance. I think it's somewhere close to 85 to 90%. Uh, when there's financial troubles, there's just gonna be troubles in a marriage. So understanding how to manage your finances um, within, uh, within your, 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 your ability, right? Is gonna be key and, under and understand how to get past that barrier would be that second piece is financial management. Capacity, which I think I mentioned that as well, it kind of goes into the balance, understanding how, how much capacity you have to deliver on your idea, to deliver within your business, um, to work with your either your family, uh, your 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 full time gig, etc. So understanding your capacity um, is going to be key as well as getting past that barrier. And then motivation. I mean, a lot of times, like I said, for me, that that the reason, the biggest reason why I didn't take that leap and step step out on VL flows was personally speaking, I had a I had brain surgery, right, and so. Um, when I was going through that process and found out I had, so I, I, and I was talking to Devin about this, I've had, um, I've had two brain surgeries in my life, right? So I had one when I was in high school, uh, senior in high school, and then I had a brain surgery in 2012. So in 2012, um, I got that bill, right? And that, that bill for my brain surgery was, I was in the hospital for, I think, 56 hours, and that bill was $160,000. Um, luckily, being that I work for uh, Johnson & Johnson, I have pretty strong be uh, benefits and I only paid $2,500 of that. But for me, um, looking outside, looking for insurance, et cetera, it was more than my mortgage. Like I was getting quotes for personal private insurance for $1,500, $1,600 a month. And that was because I had a pre-existing condition. So those were some of the things that kind of kept me in this middle ground where I'm keeping VL flows active continue to build it so I can have that source of uh, passive income, 
right? But at the same time, keeping my, my day job because it allowed me to be able to do some of those things and not have to be concerned about health insurance. Um, so I mean, that th those are some of the things I wanted to kind of talk about. And I, uh, when Deb and I were speaking, we wanted to leave half of the, the conversation for Q&A. Um, but I mean, those are the, the, the bullets and slides I wanted you guys to go through. And the rest of it is really a, a Q&A session. So if you guys want to come off mute uh, and ask questions, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Hey, Vincent, this is uh, Tim Brown. How you doing? So, Tim, how are you? Man, I'm doing well. For, first of all, let me say, boy, you, you got some great benefits over there at J&J. Yeah, yeah. That was a huge, that was a huge, uh, uh, that was a huge difference, right? So that's awesome. Glad, uh, glad you had that benefit. Um, so I'm just curious, when you think about organizations like um, BDPA and NSBE, and you think about kind of where you started, you talked about having that support system. Um, how, what would you suggest for BDPA and, and NSBE to do to create that support system for uh, aspiring entrepreneurs? I mean, Tim, I think this is, this is a great start, right? So um, the, my, my first BDPA talk was networking, right? And working with some of the folks uh, within the organization and said, hey, we'd love for you to come and, and have a conversation. And uh, I think that talk was more about understanding um, your pie and your image, right? So, and one of the things that I learned uh, connecting with BDPA was I heard about this opportunity, right? And so what I try my best to do is as a mentor and as a mentee is try to connect people. So like, for example, um, I think one of your, your, uh, one of your future speakers is a really good friend of mine I've known for close to 20 years. And he's, um, he's a full-time entrepreneur, has a, a couple different businesses. Um, and so I think having this, this, having this form and then also having, uh, making it a, like the awareness of having a form like this is extremely helpful, right? Because there's gonna be entrepreneurs who wanna have opportunities, wanna be able to have conversations. Um, and so being able to connect folks is gonna be where BDPA and Nesby uh, play the biggest role. And like I said, for me, Nesby was a lifeline uh, when I was in undergrad, right? Because at going to a PWI, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of us, right? So at Ohio State, when I was there in, in 97, there was 52,000 students on the main campus. I think we, there was maybe four or 5,000 black people. Um, and a lot of times the, the, the black folks on campus didn't live on campus, right? So they either lived off campus or, so you only really seen your, your, your close knit group. And when I was in those, those classes for engineering, some of the upper level courses, I was just the only African-American men, right? And at Ohio State, we're talking of lectures of like two, 300 people. So once again, I think having these forums and having the communication so that folks know they're available is gonna be key for BPA and Nesby to kind of help entrepreneurs do well and succeed in this, uh, in this space. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and although that's cool, you're part of region four, I just want you to know, region one uh, was, still is the best. It's four solid, bro. <laughs> so it's, it's, all, it's all good. I, I'm glad you repped your region, but it's, you know, just so that you know. <laughs> Hey, Vincent, I have a question. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Glenn. My question is, um, you talk about the path and barriers. Um, if I have a, you know, great idea, um, but I'm not at all too familiar with uh, how to start a business or, or business processing, what do you recommend are the first three steps to getting on that path of coming out with maybe a complete business plan or, you know, making that uh, petition or an application for an LLC, what is your recommendations? So great question, Jason. I, I think for me, that's, that was interesting, right? So when I started um, and I was going through this conversation with, uh, with Chris um, in the beginning, he said, what kind of got me to start VR flows? Um, so when I moved from, from Ohio to New Jersey, working for J&J, um, I had this, this whole interesting tax situation. So, I mean, I've been on the, the, the hustle, grind, rinse, repeat situation since I was a, a young boy. I mean, I remember when I was hustling candy uh, in elementary school, 
selling dum dums and, and blow pops for twenty five cent a piece. And folks was like, well, I can get them for five cent at the corner store. Why are you selling them for a nickel? I was like, well, why are you selling them for a quarter? I was like, well, you get them for me for a quarter. We ain't at the corner store. So, and what ended up happening was as I as I started working in corporate America, and uh, as I mentioned to Chris earlier, I was one of my side hustles in college was I was doing taxes, right? So I was doing I had TurboTax on my computer. Um, and I was doing people's taxes. So when I came to the corporate realm in my head, I'm like, you know what? I can continue doing this. I can do my own. And so I tried to do my own taxes using TurboTax. And, uh, I'd worked for, in 2002, I'd worked for four and a half months on, on a corporate job. Plus I was working uh, full-time at a, when I was an undergrad. And so when I did my taxes and I'd seen that I owe New Jersey and I was getting back pennies federally, I was confused, right? So I connected with a CPA based out of Philly. And uh, he and I got to talking and he was like, you know what? Um, one, do you have any passions? And if so, how can you turn that into a business? So from 03 to 07 is where I kind of went through that process. So the first thing I did was me. So now things are kind of different, Jason. So what I did then was I connected with the lawyer locally. Um, I, I think it was the, the, to create the LLC was the first thing I did, right? So I connected with a local lawyer, went through the process to create the LLC. Um, that was, I think that was like at the time, it was like 450 bucks to go ahead and go through the paperwork. Um, I think that would be the first step. And now there's so many ways to do LLC creation online. Um, you can, I think that you can Google how to create an LLC and go through that step. And I think it's, it might, may be cheaper than I paid back then, right? So I think, I think that's gonna be key initially is have your LLC created, right? So, and, and reason why, or depending on, depending on the, the idea that you have, um, there's a, a lot of different corporations you can do. You can do S Corp, you can do the LLC, you can do, I think there's a, a, a C Corp, et cetera. Um, where I found and talking to my, my, uh, my tax guy was the LLC gives you the most protection uh, from keeping whatever you have personally personal, and then whatever's on your business tied to your business. But I mean, I think that first step for me was getting that that incorporated. So getting the VL Flows LLC, um, getting that started, and then kind of going from there. Because at the same time, I was still doing web design, right? So I was still doing websites, and that's where I kind of started because that was where my passion was. So building websites on the side, um, and it's funny when I think about what I was doing uh, previously to how we're building now. So previously, the websites was all. Uh, personally man individually managed where I had to do all the changes and so over year over the years I was able to shift from that particular mindset into content management systems but I think that first step Jason would be to uh, get your LLC um, together and like I said uh, there's ways you can do that on Google I think there's different uh, websites can that would help you to do that and then if you have your business plan I believe um, this overall tech talk series is going to give opportunities for folks to have other entrepreneurs review your business plan and give you that feedback. So I would say stay plugged in with uh, with this team and this team can kind of help you grow those ideas. Thank you so much for taking my question. No worries. I think uh, I may have seen... Is there questions in the chat? Yeah, I think, uh, Chris, was that your question that Vincent just addressed, or is that a different one? Uh, it might be. I think it's different. Um, okay. So my strat my question was, um, what are some of the strategies for overcoming that, that barrier of fear um, in order to start it? So, Chris, I mean, that it's a great question. And it's, it's difficult, right? I mean, and that's that was one of the things that I was hesitant about even being here talking to you guys, because I still feel like I haven't really truly overcame that fear, right? Um, but I mean, the, the, the real strategy is you, you've got to bet on yourself, right? At the end of the day, if it's, if it's corporate, if it's entrepreneurial, um, you truly got to bet on yourself, right? And so um, if, if you look at... Um, if you look at a, a lot of the entrepreneurs today, they have probably they had a ton of no's in front of them, right? Um, and so, being willing to take that calculated risk to better yourself and, and really invest in yourself in your future, right? So I mean, BL Flows for me is going to be a legacy for my kids. 
Um, I was just reading just yesterday on how uh, from ages seven to 22, um, I could hire my kids to do work within my business and pay them $12,000 a year and then deduct that from my business with it's a, a tax deduction that I could take for both of my children, as well as I can also create um, another $6,000 a year uh, in a 401k type, uh, either our, um, IRAs for them and all that be tax deductions, right? So the thought process is, is figuring out a way to step past um, your fear and bet on yourself, right? Um, and actually I'll, I'll share that link uh, with the team. I, I need to find it, but uh, I was reading through it and I was like, it's, it's amazing how um, basically I can end up right now of $36,000 a year um, and my kids will actually have tax-free income because at $12,000 a year, it's uh, it's considered there's no there's no federal tax required. So that's the that's the threshold. So at the end of the day, um, trying to figure out how do you I mean, like the, the strategy to get past the fear is you just got to take that chance. You got to better yourself um, and believe that you can do it. Surround yourself with, with folks like I'm saying Tim Brown and, and, and Devin who give you that that uh, give you that energy and that that uh, that good juju. Right. So to, to make you feel um, empowered to take those steps. But, I mean, it's it's a difficult thing because at the end of the day, fear controls a lot of our um, our decisions in our life. Right. A lot of things we don't do. We don't, we don't go for that new job because the fear of I don't know if I'm ready for it or we don't don't say hello to, to that young lady or, or, or I think it's all I think it's all men on this call. So yeah, we don't say hello to that young lady or whatever the case may be. Because that fear, right? So it's really kind of getting outside of our own way and, uh, and stepping outside the box. This is Henry Coleman. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Henry, how are you? Wonderful. I'm in Rhode Island. I'm originally from New Jersey. I'm a Princeton grad and I'm in the Boston area. So I had a chance to be a webmaster for the uh, uh, Metro West uh, BDPA. I've okay. been retired for three years. Uh, I'm an old uh, IBMer and all that kind of good stuff. But I just wanted to, yeah, I want to reinforce what you're saying. I have three advisors, uh, which kind of mitigates the fear a little bit. Number one, I have a lawyer. So I, that's how I did my LLC. The second person I have is a really good tax person. But because of my position, I have a little bit more money now. I also have a financial planner. And the way they're paid is, they take 1% of the uh, uh, gross amount every year. But since I probably get three or four or 5% uh, return, then that nets out. So to mitigate fear, surround yourself with legal protection and also the financial piece. So it all boils down to what are you really afraid of? You don't wanna get into a legal bind, number one. And two, you don't wanna get into a financial bind which means a lot of times you may have to maintain your, your current job so you can have those protections against like uh, medical costs, et cetera. I just want to add and reinforce. I mean, that, and that's a great point, Henry. I know uh, for me, what was interesting, like I had planned to give uh, corporate America seven years of my life, right? And at, at year five, I got promoted to worldwide manager and those checks kind of changed things change perspectives, right? I bought a house, moved to Florida, and I'm like, mm, do, do, I, do I wanna leave this comfort, right? But at the same time, I was still growing my business. So to your point, um, I also, around that time when I, got, was, when I got that role, I got a financial advisor. So I worked with a, uh, a, a young African-American male uh, out of Columbus, Ohio. He's uh, connected with Edward Jones. And, and just like you, Henry, they take their percentage, but my portfolio since I started with, with Phil and Edward Jones, we're up 24% uh, overall since we've uh, since we got together. So really just to your point, having your legal team, having a, having a financial advisor and having a, a, a strong tax accountant is all key to kind of protect some of those things and it can help you get past that fear uh, to your point. Henry. I see uh, this question on the chat. How do I market my services in the beginning? Um, so it's all been word of mouth, right? And the reason why um, 
and I, I don't want to butcher your name, so I, I, but um, <laughs> if you come off mute and tell me what it is, I'll use it. But um, it's all been word of mouth for me um, because once again, it's about capacity, right? So what I try my best to do is uh, I launch sites. I have um, not only do I have my Facebook page, I have um, and I have uh, my my VL Flows website. So if you guys go to vlflows.com, you'll see my website. Um, and so what I try my best to do is from that perspective, from the word of mouth perspective, um, I allow my client to kind of tell, hey, I work to be on clothes to do this. And that's how I get more, uh, more business, right? Um, on the, the, the small business investment and the consulting, once again, same scenario. I was working with di different organizations nationally, uh, nationally. And so having basically posting about that on my Facebook page, Post about that on my uh, my blog within um, and I'm oh, okay. I was seeing the uh, pronunciation. Um, so what I try to do for for marketing, um, being it because my capacity is still limited, right? I still um, very actively involved with my my, my two littles uh, right now. Marketing is uh, primarily word of mouth, right? So folks hear about me and like, for example, some of the things I've done locally in Jacksonville has been because someone else had mentioned it and so reached out, hey, I heard you do this, would you be able to help my company? Okay, thank you for that. And, and, that, and that pronunciation is Dumisani. Dumisani, gotcha. Dumisani. I had that. I was curious. I was going to ask regardless. So <laughs> thanks for that. And thanks for the question. Yes, thank you for the question. I, I'll drop a question um, in, in the mix, Vincent. Uh, so knowing what you know now, is there anything you would have done differently when you were first starting out? Um, I think knowing what I know now, I think the only thing I would have done differently, um, and it kind of goes back to Henry's point, is I probably would have started earlier, started smaller with my uh, my advisor, right? And so I, I think where folks, a lot of times uh, young folks coming up, they believe, hey, I don't have money to put money away. And I think that's that's a bad uh, perspective. Like now granted, so I started at Johnson & Johnson, um, I was always doing a 401k piece, but like, I think that personal financial advisor piece and putting money away there, I feel like I could have started earlier. Right. So even small increments of a hundred bucks a month um, could have made a huge difference. Uh, so I think that's the only thing I would change uh, because in my portfolio, I think it now would be a lot bigger. It'd give me a lot more um, capital to be able to make modifications or changes or investments in other places. Um, so that's the only thing I think I would do uh, earlier or change is start uh, looking at how do I invest um, earlier in my in my life. So like I started working at 23. I didn't get with Phil until I was close to 30. I feel like that was years wasted. Now, granted, when I was living in New Jersey, coming from Ohio, I was tricking a little bit. So, you know, uh, funds was a little bit minimal, but at the same time, I feel like I could have been doing a lot more than I was doing then. So I think that's the only thing I would change them. What path are you trying to guide your business on currently? So the, the next question I see is, what path am I trying to guide my business on currently and what barriers are you expecting to face during that journey? Um, so right now, what I'm trying, so the path I'm trying to guide via flows is figure out more passive income opportunities, right? And so um, where I see barriers there is there's, it's difficult to truly clarify a great opportunity. So um, via flows, uh, I, this, uh, in 21, I did a spinoff of VL Flows and created a, an Ohio-based LLC that's going to be uh, real estate ventures. So it's uh, JE Flows Holdings. So that was created. And uh, so me and a partner uh, in, in Ohio is doing uh, multifamily units. And it's funny, this morning, we just closed on our third unit. So how I see how I'm going to grow the overall business portfolio is more on the real estate side, uh, where I see uh, or where I expect the barriers there is really having, uh, where I've seen this far, like, so for example, under VL Flows, I had a couple of opportunities in Jacksonville where I live to do flip properties. And where I've seen difficulties and struggles there was with, with general contractors and having folks being able to deliver on time. Um, so uh, the barriers I see in real estate is where I've seen thus far is there's a lot of opportunity in real estate now. 
Um, but then there's they're supposed to have a lot of money, especially coming from the Northeast. We've seen um, we've seen folks in the Northeast moving south, and you have a lot more capital, right? So uh, a Northeast pro- a 200 square, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, a, a 2,500 square foot property in the Northeast potentially can run you between I don't know five and eight hundred thousand dollars. That same property in in the South is going to probably be half of that amount. So where the barriers I've seen as far as, as of late is when you're going like bidding wars on properties, uh, especially flip properties, trying to grab, um, I've been on different auction sites for, for flip properties in real estate and just getting outbid, right? So I mean, really what I'm trying my best to do now is continue to increase that capital so I don't have that barrier, but that it's a, it's a catch 22, right? So, um, but that's how I see, I'm gonna grow, continue to grow VL flows, we still do uh, the website uh, piece of the, the business, but real estate is really where we're going to move into next because I'm trying to see if I can create that passive income so that when my, my children graduate from, uh, or my children decide to either go to school or whatnot, I'll be able to pass some of those, the real estate uh, items down to them uh, as, as something that they can have and, and continue getting that passive income and building generational wealth. All right. Any more questions from the group? Let's make sure everyone has a chance to have their voices heard. Thought I saw somebody come off mute. Yeah, I, I did. I, I was going to just say thank you to Vincent. I appreciate him making time to uh, educate us on his journey and and helping those on the line that are uh, interested in following his footsteps. So I just wanted to say thank you. That was it, Evan, no question. No worries, thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. Like I said, I was I was concerned about this conversation. Um, I have a very interesting story, but at the same time, hopefully I got through a nugget or two out there. I was trying to find this link that I'm gonna share with the folks. Um, Devin, do you have everyone's uh, contact information? Yes. All right. So what I'll do is I'll get you that link um, that has the the article on um, paying your being able to pay your kids as long as you can can show that they they're doing work for your business, and then you can actually uh, write that off. And then like to me, that's going to be a godsend where I can basically provide funding into their accounts uh, up to twelve thousand dollars a year, as well as create IRAs for them um, starting at age seven. I mean, it's, it can be a, a game changer, especially for young uh, brown kids these days. Definitely. Please share that. And I, I could use that myself. <laughs> uh, with my two little girls running around here. They need jobs anyhow. So good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Vincent, for sharing with us today. I mean, thank you, everyone, for attending. And thank you for your questions and your engagement throughout the conversation. Uh, I wanted to give a chance uh, for Christopher and, and or Russell uh, to take a second and highlight the Nesby Convention that's coming up next week, uh, as well as our Entrepreneur and Residence panel that we'll be having for those who have signed up for our actual um, Entrepreneurship from Idea to Launch program. So I know Christopher or Russell, the one of you want to speak to the Nesby Convention in itself and specifically the EIR. Yeah, no problem. Okay, um, so first off, I want to say thank you, Vincent, uh, for taking time out your day um, and speaking to us and giving us your perspective. Um, greatly appreciating your story. Um, as far as Nesby uh, information, so yeah, like Devin said, we are having an annual convention next week um, with our ER panel um, discussion happening on Saturday. Uh, more information. Um, on that, uh, we have a speaker, uh, Mr. Let me butcher his name. Uh, but we have a guest speaker speaking on business planning next week. Um, more information on that and the linkage is uh, being further um, sent out. So be on the lookout for those if you signed up for the program. Um, so you'll be able to attend virtually or in person if you are going to the conference in Anaheim. Anything you'd like to add, uh, Russell? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm excited uh, that, that we have kicked off this series. I'm excited for our engagement at the upcoming convention. Um, I will, will drop out there that this, this series is getting noticed um, and, and others have uh, begun to reach out for how they can partner and help us continue to uh, build this, 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 this joint venture. So definitely excited about the engagement at the upcoming convention and our, our upcoming workshops and engagement points uh, here in the next, uh, next few months. All right, thank you, Russell and Chris, for that. And then drop that link in the chat, Devin. Okay, yeah, so if you look in the chat, Vincent has shared that link around uh, hiring your kids, as, as they're saying there. So definitely check that out. I uh, want to remind you that the recording from this session, um, as well as our previous talk, uh, will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, the previous session is already out there. I um, mean, this one will be uploaded shortly. So we'll send that link out uh, to make sure everyone has access to that so you can reference this back uh, for the valuable information shared by Vincent today. Uh, and then lastly, I would say on, on the BDPA side of things, uh, stay tuned. I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for our BDPA conference being held uh, in Atlanta this year in August. I believe that's August 18th through the 20th. Uh, it'll be hybrid, so we'll be in Atlanta, and there'll be a virtual component to that as well. And that's bdpa.com, bdpa.org. I'll find that link and put it in the chat as well. Uh, but, but Tim, anything you want to add on the conference or just anything in general as our BDPA president? Yeah, no, you um, you hit it right on the mark. I appreciate you uh, putting in that plug. Definitely want to say save the date and um, definitely want to encourage people to um, be in person. Um, you know, we uh, understand that, you know, there's still some hesitancy out there and, and what have you, but we're going to do all we can keep people safe, right, and make sure we use all precautions. So, uh, so, so thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Okay. All right, I believe I have the link here. I believe that's 20, oh, that's the wrong conference. <laughs> you don't need that one. I'll put the link in the chat here shortly in case anyone wants to reference that. I got it for you, man. Okay. There we go. So bdpa.org slash event slash bdpacon 2022. So definitely check that out, register. Uh, we hope to see you there. And if, if you're not already registered, if it's still available, uh, definitely uh, get involved in the Nesby Convention next weekend. If you're in Anaheim or able to plug in, get involved there as well. So thank you. Vincent, any last words from you before we wrap? No, I, like I said, I sincerely appreciate the team for having me. Um, hopefully I gave you a nugget uh, that you could take. And if folks want to connect, feel free to reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn and uh, we'll go from there. All right. All right, thank you all to the participants. Uh, get your elevator pitches ready, and we'll see you at the EIR panel at the Nesby Convention next Saturday. Thank you all. Have a good one. Stay safe. Stay blessed. All right. Yeah, you too, man.